Chapter 7. But Solomon was building his own house thirteen years, and he finished all his house. He built also the house of the forest of Lebanon. The length thereof was an hundred cubits, and the breadth thereof fifty cubits, and the height thereof thirty cubits, upon four rows of cedar pillars with cedar beams upon the pillars. And it was covered with cedar above, ab above upon the beams that lay on forty-five pillars, fifteen in a row. And there were windows in three rows, and light was against light in three ranks. And all the doors and posts were square with the windows, and light was against light in three ranks. And he made a porch of pillars, the length thereof was fifty cubits, and the breadth thereof was thirty cubits. And the porch before them, and all, and the other pillars, and the thick beam were before them. And he made a porch for the throne, where he might judge, even the porch of judgment. And it was covered with cedar from one side of the floor to the other. And his house where he dwelt had another court within the porch, which was like of the like work. Solomon made also an house for Pharaoh's daughter, whom he had taken to wife like unto this porch. All these were of costly stones, according to the measures of huge stones, sawed with sawed saws, within and without, even from the foundation unto the coping, and so on the outside toward the great court. And the foundation was of costly stones, even great stones, stones of ten cubits, and stones of eight cubits. And above were costly stones, after the measure of huge stones, and cedars. And the great court about was with three rows of huge stones and a row of cedar beams, both for the inner court of the house of the Lord and for the porch for the house. And King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. He was a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a man of Tyre, a man a worker in brass. And he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works of brass. And he came to King Solomon and wrought all his work. For he cast two pillars of brass of eighteen cubits high apiece, and a line of twelve cubits did compass either of them about. And he made two chapiters of molten brass to set upon the tops of the pillars. The height of the one chapiter was five cubits, and the height of the other chapiter was five cubits. And nets of checkerwork and wreaths of chainwork for the chapiters which were upon the tops of the pillars, seven for the one chapiter and seven for the other. And he made the pillars and two rows round about upon the one network to cover the chapiters that were upon the top with pomegranates, and so did he for the other chapiter. And the chapiters that were upon the top of the pillars were of lily work and the porch, four cubits. And the chapiters upon the two pillars had pomegranates also above, over against the belly which was by the network, and the pomegranates were two hundred in rows round about upon the other chapiter. And he set up the pillars in the porch of the temple, and he set up the right pillar and called the name of it Jachin, and he set up the left pillar and called the name thereof Boaz. And upon the tops of the pillars was lily work, so that the work of the pillar so was the work of the pillar finished. And he made a molten sea, ten cubits from one rim to the other. It was round all about, and his height was five cubits, and a line of thirty cubits did compass it round about. And under the brim of it round about there were knops compassing it, ten in a cubit, compassing the sea round about, and knops were cast in two rows when it was cast. It stood upon twelve oxen, three looking north toward the north, and three looking toward the west, and three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. And the sea was set above them, and all their hinder parts were inward. And it was an hand breadth thick. And the brim thereof was wrought like the brim of a cup, with flowers of lilies. It contained two thousand baths. And he made ten bases of brass. Four cubits was the length of one base, and four cubits the breadth of thereof, and three cubits the height of it. And the work of the bases was on this manner. They had borders, and the borders were between the ledges. And on the borders that were between the ledges were lions, oxen, and cherubim. And upon the ledges there was a base above, and beneath the lions and oxen were certain additions made of thin work. And every base had four brazen wheels, and the plates of brass, and the four corners thereof had undersetters. Under the laver were undersetters molten at the side of every addition. And the mouth of it within the chapiter and above was a cubit. But the mouth thereof was round after the work of the, ba of the base, a cubit and a half, and also upon the mouth of it were gravings with their borders foursquare, not round. 
and under the borders were four wheels, and the axle trees of the wheels were joined at the base to the base, and the height of a wheel was a cubit and a half cubit. And the work of the wheels was like the work of a chariot wheel. Their axle trees and their knaves and their fellows and their spokes were all molten. And there were four undersetters to the four corners of one base, and the undersetters were of the very base itself. And in the top of the base was there a round compass of half a cubit high. And on the top of the base the ledges thereof and the borders thereof were of the same. For on the plates of the ledges thereof and on the borders thereof he graved cherubims, lions, and palm trees, according to the proportion of every one, and additions round about. After this manner he made the ten bases, all of them had one casting, one measure, and one size. Then made he ten lavers of brass. One laver contained forty baths, and every laver, laver was four cubits, and upon every one of the ten bases one laver. And he put five bases on the right side of the house, and five on the left side of the house. And he set the sea on the right side of the house eastward over against the south. And Hiram made the lavers and the shovels and the basins. So Hiram made an end of doing all the work that he made the King Solomon for the house of the Lord. The two pillars and the two bowls of the chapiters that were on the top of the two pillars, and the two networks to cover the two bowls of the chapiters which were upon the top of the pillars, and 400 pomegranates for the two networks, even two rows of pomegranates for one network to cover the two bowls of the chapiters that were upon the pillars, and the ten bases, and the ten lavers on the bases, and one sea, and twelve oxen under the sea, and the pots, and the shovels, and the basins, and all these vessels which Hiram made to King Solomon for the house of the Lord were of bright brass. In the plain of Jordan did the king cast them, in the clay ground between Sukkoth and Zarthan. And Solomon left all the vessels unweighed, because they were exceeding many, neither was the weight of the brass found out. And Solomon made... All the vessels that pertained unto the house of the Lord, the altar of gold and the table of gold, whereupon the shewbread was, and the candlesticks of pure gold, five on the right side and five on the left, before the oracle, with the flowers and the lamps and the tongs of gold, and the bowls and the snuffers and the basins and the spoons and the censers of pure gold, and the hinges of gold, both for the doors of the inner house, the most holy place, and for the doors of the house to wit of the temple. So was ended all the work the king Solomon made for the house of the Lord. And Solomon brought in the things which David his father had dedicated, even the silver and the gold and the vessels did he put among the treasures of the house of the Lord. I want you to think now that you are one of the 80,000 guys who has been assigned to be a hewer of rock. And... What they tell you is, you're going to be cutting rock for the temple. And think, wow, isn't that really nice? I'll be cutting it. You know, nice, nice fresh air, all the rest of the stuff. But that's not what happened. The vast majority of the rock was cut from underground quarries. If you went to Jerusalem and you found the Damascus Gate today, and you can find it, it's in the wall. And about 100 yards away from there, there is an entrance to the underground quarries. You go in the underground quarry, and what you will see after a short trip, walk, are is a whole series of rooms that are about 700 feet wide, 7 or 8 or 900 feet long, and about 30 feet high. And these rooms, I mean, there's stuff on top of these, okay? Uh, buildings and all that on top of these. This is where they carved the rock from. They would dig a ditch about four inches around a piece of rock, put wooden wedges in it, get them wet, it would swell up, it would crack the rock, and then it would haul the pieces by pure manpower out. They've got rocks that are in that foundation, the temple foundation, that weigh about 100 tons. They've got other ones that are not really sure how much they weigh, but they're 38 feet long and quite wide and quite thick. And there are big, bigger ones that they that were broken in the transport, and the only light you'd have had would be your little candle. And that's what it was like getting rock for the temple foundation. It was three years of work before they could start building the temple to get that foundation together. <laughs>